So we're gonna, you know, go through the whole process of an oil change on this V-Strom. Should we start uh, this uh, process of how to change your oil? Let's do it. All right. All right, bike's on the lift and we're ready to get going here. We're gonna talk about some of the tools that I um, wanna always have ready. We've looked at the fasteners on the bike here and you could see here just some standard things. Uh, Steve, you're gonna need a drain pan, obviously, to put the oil in. Okay, first thing, can't stress enough, is that you need to start with a clean oil pan because we want to be able to uh, inspect the oil. If you start this dirty and there's old pieces of crap or anything in there, I mean, you aren't gonna be able to go, hey, wow, maybe I have a problem. Maybe my clutch is starting to wear. Maybe my transmission's wearing or something. So we wanna have a clean oil pan. Uh, flashlight, can't stress enough. You need to be able to see what you're doing. I've got three different types of oil filter removal tools. Uh, this is a set of pliers. Sometimes you can just grab onto it. Um, this one is a, um, a tool that inserts over the filter and you, they're different for different filters and what they do is they count the number of these uh, what they call flats and if you have a 19 flat oil filter you just count the squares. Uh, and then you're going to see what I love to use is this strap wrench here. It's by far my favorite uh, when, a, when a available for the type of model. I got an extension to go in here if needed. Um, we have to take off a little cowling. Uh, and not sure if we have to versus we're going to do it because it's going to be more convenient and allow us to have more inspection time. Um, I got some uh, paste here that I always put on my drain bolts. So you'll see that when we get to that. Oil filter drain, uh, bolt removal tools, oil filter, quartz oil, and then a torque wrench so that we can do the job appropriately. What we've got here is the ability to measure how much we're going to put in if needed. So let's say we put, you know, three quarts in and it and it didn't seem like it was enough or it wasn't coming into the viewing window instead of me just guessing I could honestly go back and put in a hundred two hundred three hundred you know up to a half quart or keep going and then I could document that on my owner's manual or something that hey when I did the oil change it actually took 3.1 quarts so that I would know to get that extra 100 cc's or so on rather than guessing so this is a professional way to do it funnels just to keep things clean and some rags to uh, uh, keep things going as well. So let's go ahead and start the process of the actual oil change. Steve's removing that little cowl right now these, uh, with this Allen key wrench. Uh, it's a four millimeter Allen, four bolts. Slip it off, organize it, set it to the side. Okay, now that we're at this point, we can start to see here, obviously our goal is to get the oil filter off. They put it in a wonderful spot in that drain plug. Before you go stick in your drain pan under here, I go ahead and knock the bolt loose first. Go ahead and remove that. Okay, that's good. We're loose. Now we're going to go ahead and get our oil pan underneath there. See how easy it is when you start going upside down on stuff, how it flips on oh, you? absolutely. It's really easy to strip stuff. So you can see there, the just the way that was hitting, it was splashing out of the pan, so being prepared to move things around where you need it you know there's no there's no mandatory place for this oil pan one thing you want to think about is if you start right here as this goes to finish it can start to come out of the pan so try to have yourself a good amount of pan all the way around this it's, a lot of times just by poor design it'll hit an exhaust and drain off then you could use cardboard or something to deflect it a piece of plastic uh, cutting board, an old one that you're disposing of, is a great way to make a little nice deflector. Okay, so we're going to let the oil drain. Hey, another point, uh, I'll make sure I want to have in this video, is that our engine is fully warmed up. We just went on a 30-mile ride. It's good and hot, and we're changing the oil uh, so it's uh, warmed up there. So let's uh, move our attention now while that's draining. We're going to go ahead and get the oil filter off, and I'll show a couple different ways that we can do that. All right, Steve, I'm going to show you a couple different types of uh, oil filter removal tools. We got this set of pliers here. This one would probably work fine on this to grab around and crank the oil filter off, so that's one way. The other uh, quote unquote redneck way to do it put a screwdriver through it, like if it's seized or stuck or stripped, and you could get it off that way by piercing it. This is what I talked about about the flats. So we can take and match up the right size filter, which this happens to be it. The strap wrench by far is my favorite because what we're going to do is we're going to 
get it on here and we got to think and we can loosen or tighten with this so we can remove and install so since I want to loosen it I take and start to move this in the loosening position and what's going to happen is it's going to wrap around that oil filter and as you keep tightening it just gets tighter and tighter and tighter on there and it's going to go ahead and pull it off now I like to get them down at the base here I usually have pretty good luck being able to get the the oil filter removed it helps to keep some light pressure on the strap wrench as you're spinning that around and you'll see you just kind of keep readjusting it into place as it hits the exhaust pipe. You just take off a little tension, roll it back around, and re reset. Alright, we're going to go ahead and check the oil. Now you could put a funnel and a screen in here, it depends how crazy you want to get with it. I'll show you, most of the thick stuff is going to... You know, if there's any big problems, it's going to stay at the bottom here. So if I saw a bunch of chunks or anything really shiny coming out of there right now, I would stop and get a filter. All right, we're going to talk real quickly about the metal filings and the oil. You can see here, we talked about how we just got a couple of little tiny, tiny pieces of the shiny uh, substance. We put a magnet on there and see that it does not magnetize, which means it's aluminum. Could be just casting flash. Uh, possibly some uh, clutch plate material. Uh, there's just nothing to worry about. A little bit of this is just completely normal. You got a motorcycle at 12, 15,000 miles. If you had a bunch of brass in here, you'd be concerned that it's some type of bushing from the transmission. Maybe if you have uh, uh, some bronze material or whatnot in the crankshaft bearings, camshaft bearings or bushings. <clears throat> and then if you had chunks of steel, you'd be really worried. That could be transmission gears, primary gears, uh, things like that. So you really want to look for any metal that's in here. If you're not sure at all, save this, take it to your dealer and they can give you a more detailed explanation of what they think could be the problem with your motorcycle. So there's a really good tip on that. On the drain bolt here, the first thing I want you to notice, Steve, is this crush washer. Okay? And this is something that you do want to replace. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to use some Teflon paste and give ourselves a little bit of extra insurance on that. So Steve, why don't you go ahead and uh, put some on that bolt. Put towards the bottom edge of the bolt and then it'll work its way up as you install. That's good. Just set that in there and off to the side for a second. And have you wiped off the bottom of the oil pan? Not yet. Okay, so he's gonna get that wiped off. What's that little string hanging there? Piece of junk. Okay. Road debris. Okay. All right. While you got that rag in your hand, do the oil filter mount. And what you're looking for there is make sure the old gasket from the filter didn't stick on there as well. All right. So he's gonna thread that uh, drain bolt up there. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna help him set up a digital torque wrench here. We've looked up the spec here, and it's 16.5 pounds. So we have the ability, we'll do 16 here, and you almost always on these over torque a hair. So we're going to set 16. Okay, go ahead and open uh, your oil filter there. Now here's something I like to do, is take some of the old oil, yep, and wipe it around that o-ring. Up in here. Yep. yep. And what that does is that the O-ring, if it were dry, could want to hit that dry surface and want to tear or peel, <clears throat> creating a leak. So by getting it wet, it will roll around the engine case and you have less likely a chance to, uh, to mess it up. Now what I like to do, it's just put a little bit of oil in your filter. On this one, since it's not truly upside down, go ahead and open your oil and just get that out of your way. Tear it off. It just doesn't catch. There you go. That's good. All you're doing is just uh, having less time for the oil pump to have to build up pressure. So go ahead and spin her up. And let's see how this old Stevo does here torquing. 16. It's set at 16. Good. Okay. So get your hand in the right spot. Can't touch that battery pack. Nice and slow. Okay, now let's see what you torqued it at. Look at that. He torqued it exactly. 16 pounds with smooth and even motion. We chose to use the flat type installer and torque to 12 foot pounds. 
We're going to put two and a half quarts in and then check things out and I'll show you why. On the side of most engines, you're going to see a number here and you see at 2700 milliliters and 2700 milliliters happens to convert almost exactly to cc's so 2700 cc's you can look at this numerous different ways there's 946 cc's in a quart you've never heard this before these oil filter jug alright look at that now I want you to think about something we put a little oil in the filter okay we've only got two and a half quarts in it and we're at the full line if you go ahead and just dump full amounts in there you could end up being overfilled so I'm happy with where we are right now I'm, I think it's gonna take a hair more but let's go ahead and put the cap on and what we need to do is run the vehicle quick okay we're gonna fire up the bike and this is something that is important okay see our oil indicate oil light indicator Steve go ahead and pull the clutch we're gonna start the bike if that light doesn't go out in a few seconds shut it off okay the other, there's two things we're looking for here on any motorcycle. Number one, when you turn the key on, you want to see that light. If, uh, and that light doesn't work, you would never know without hooking up a gauge. So this is a very, very important indicator. This only shuts off at a very low oil pressure situation, but you need to know that it's functioning, which it is for us. We're just above the L line. On metric motorcycles, I did a video on this in my other Every Mechanics playlist. On all your almost 99.999% of the time, metric vehicles between these two lines is half a quart, 500 cc's. Okay. So let's let's do some simple math here. We put two and a half quarts in. This says 200 and this says 2.7 quarts. When and we only put two and a half in, that other 150, 200 cc's is exactly what we need for this to be at the right level. Exactly. One other problem. What? Okay. That seems logical, right? Yes. Okay, check this out though. We got to remember something. What's that? We're not level. We've got the bike in the air. Correct. Per the owner's manual, you're to check the oil level with the bike level. By jacking that up in the air, what'd that do to the oil level? It made it higher than it probably really is. It made it forward. Yeah. So this is not the ideal situation. I would say it probably moved, what, 100 cc's? A little bit, yep. You know, I mean, if anything, but it's just the right way to do it is this way. So we're gonna go ahead and correct the oil level. This 500 milliliters, we'll find out that should fill up. There's 946 in a quart. Hey, Steve. What? You did pretty dang good, okay? You put in, uh, you put in right almost exactly half a quart. So you did a great job. Thank I'm you. gonna go ahead here though, and I'm going to just add 200. Just to see how that makes that line move. Yep. That 2.7 on this really worked well. We got a nice good level uh, oil line now. I'm going to get the cap on here. What's the two of us? Go ahead. Uh, we'll each take one. Up. Yep. And take uh, this. Watch your finger so it doesn't get smashed. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and reinstall your towel. After your test ride, don't forget to stop and look around and check your work, look for leaks or any problems. Steve, how do you feel about your oil change? Feel really good about it. How was your? How would you rate your training experience here? You're not a. You are not a robot. <laughs> yeah, you are not a robot. Experience, I give it a A plus. Great. Very detailed. Very uh, informative. Uh, step by step process. I feel confident enough to do it by myself, but I definitely want someone to look it over after the fact. Sure. What, uh, what about your new tool that you have in your toolbox? What's that? The new tool is this video that awesome. I can refer to into the future and everybody else out on YouTube that uh, is watching. Awesome. I mean, because we see so many of these bikes out there. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that's an inside these, joke these between uh, our Sturgis trips here. But uh, 
Well, Steve, that's awesome. I really hope uh, you had some good takeaways from this just as far as the things you do as being a mechanic and good practices and uh, um, you can use me in the future. Absolutely. Thank right. you. Hey, everybody, make it a great day and thanks for tuning into the channel. Here is your V-Strom oil change instruction video. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.